One minute ago, a new Pacific storm began sending powerful long period waves silently toward the West Coast. This is not a repeat of past events. These incoming swells can cross thousands of miles unnoticed and then strike ordinary beaches with life-threatening force. Forecast models now show an abrupt rise in swell period, a red flag for sudden coastal danger even when the shoreline seems calm. Scientists warn the energy moving offshore right now could escalate risk with little warning, leaving communities exposed. Why do these waves arrive so quietly and how much time remains before the next impact reaches land? Forecast centers across the West Coast are now tracking a fresh surge of energy brewing deep over the Central Pacific. Live data from NOAA's WaveWatch 3 model timestamped within the last hour, reveals a broad fetch, hundreds of miles long, stretching from a newly formed low pressure system near 40 degrees north, 165 degrees west. This fetch is aimed directly at California, Oregon, and Washington. Goes West satellite loops confirm the storm's rotation, with dense cloud bands fanning out across the basin and wind vectors pointing straight toward the U.S. coastline. Model projections indicate that the leading edge of this swell could reach the outer continental shelf in as little as 48 to 72 hours. The orientation of the storm's fetch means energy is focused, not dispersed, increasing the threat of higher, more powerful waves once they encounter the shallows near shore. These long period swells are not visible from the beach yet, but their arrival is now locked into the forecast window. National Weather Service forecasters highlight the critical detail it is not just the height of these waves that matters, but their period. As one marine forecaster notes, when we see the period jump above 14 seconds in the models, that is when we know the run-up risk climbs sharply. The current model run shows this threshold will be crossed as the new swell approaches. With the storm's energy now on a direct path, coastal monitoring is intensifying. The data leaves little doubt. A new wave train is inbound and the clock is running. Out in the open ocean, not all waves are created equal. The difference comes down to one number, period. Wave period is the time in seconds between each crest passing a fixed point. Local wind chop often has periods of five to 10 seconds, but long period swells, those at 14 seconds or more, carry a different kind of power. When a storm system churns for days over a broad stretch of the Pacific, it sends out groups of waves with long, steady intervals. These waves travel faster and deeper than their short period cousins, moving energy through the water column all the way to the sea floor. The key hazard marker for West Coast forecasters is a 14 second period. Once buoy readings cross that line, the energy delivered to the shoreline rises dramatically. For the same wave height offshore, a 16 second wave can run far higher up a beach than a nine second wave. That is because wave energy scales with both height and period. Longer periods mean more water is set in motion and that motion penetrates deeper. As these swells approach shallower coastal waters, they slow down, grow taller, and surge with force that can surprise even experienced beachgoers. It is important to separate these waves from tsunamis. This is not a tsunami. Tsunamis are triggered by earthquakes or landslides and move as a wall of water across the ocean. Long period storm swells are driven by wind energy from distant storms. Yet, when these swells make landfall, the risk is real. A calm, sunny day can turn dangerous in minutes when a set of 16 or 18 second waves arrives. For scientists and forecasters, period is the silent signal, a warning that ordinary surf is about to become something much more powerful. Timing is everything when it comes to coastal hazards. As the new storm's long period swell approaches, its arrival is set to overlap with the next cycle of high tide. NOAA tide predictions for San Francisco show a high water mark of six and a half feet, matching the window when the second pulse of swell energy is expected to reach the shoreline. This is not just a matter of bigger waves, it is a collision of forces. Deep ocean energy is stacking on top of already elevated sea levels. The result is a sharp increase in the total water pushed against cliffs, dunes, and seawalls. For coastal engineers, this kind of timing is a red flag. A coastal engineering specialist explains that when a fresh swell arrives before the coast has recovered from the last event, every extra foot of tide multiplies the risk. Weak spots become failure points. 
erosion accelerates, and infrastructure faces mounting pressure. Model overlays from NOAA. WaveWatch 3 and NOAA tide tables show how the peaks line up. A second swell train, arriving less than a day after the first, lands directly on a rising tide. The compounding effect is clear in the numbers and the physics. With each new event, the cumulative stress on the coastline grows, leaving less margin for error. What may look like a routine high tide on paper becomes a far more dangerous scenario when paired with long period wave energy. The coast is not just facing one threat, it is dealing with multiple hazards stacking together, amplifying the consequences for anyone or anything in the path. Cliffs along the west coast now show the scars of repeated winter storms. In Oregon, surveys near Newport reveal fresh faces of exposed earth where the shoreline has retreated. After the last round of high surf, coastal engineers measured over one meter of scarp loss at several monitoring sites, a change visible not just in satellite images, but in the abrupt drop-offs where stable ground once stood. Along Highway 1 in California, maintenance crews have flagged stretches for urgent inspection, watching for undercut pavement and cracks that were not there weeks ago. These are not isolated cases. USGS and state geologists maintain watch lists of vulnerable segments, and each new pulse of long period swell puts more pressure on these already weakened zones. Seawalls and revetments designed to buffer communities are showing signs of fatigue. Concrete barriers near harbors and parking lots bear fresh gouges where waves have overtopped, scouring away fill and exposing rebar. In some places, sensors embedded in the ground transmit real-time data on soil movement, warning of slow slumping that could accelerate with the next storm. Jetties and harbor entrances, especially at sites like Pillar Point and Humboldt Bay, are flagged for possible overtopping as long period energy builds. The coastline's visible wounds are matched by changes beneath the surface. Erosion is not just a matter of lost sand. It is a shift in the margin of safety for roads, utilities, and entire neighborhoods. Where dunes have been cut back, stormwater now finds new paths inland. Each round of waves leaves the coast less prepared for the next. The cumulative impact is clear in the numbers and in the ground itself. Every new surge compounds the risk, leaving infrastructure and communities more exposed. At exactly 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, the overlap between the forecasted swell peak and high tide creates a brief but dangerous window along the coast. This is the hour when the most energy will be forced against cliffs, harbors, and low-lying neighborhoods. NOAA tide tables and wave watch. Three model runs show the curves intersecting in real time, with waves reaching their maximum run up just as sea level crests. For emergency managers and coastal engineers, these are the minutes that matter most. Any surge or rogue set arriving during this period can overtop defenses and push water farther inland than at any other time today. The timeline is clear. As the clock approaches the peak, risk escalates rapidly. Public safety orders and closure decisions now hinge on this countdown. Every minute brings new urgency to stay clear of exposed beaches and waterfronts. Emergency managers along the West Coast are issuing immediate closure orders for high-risk beaches and harbor bars. At Pillar Point, the harbor master has restricted all small craft from crossing the bar, citing the latest National Weather Service advisory. Lifeguards in Monterey are moving warning signs up the access trails and blocking off stairways where sneaker waves have swept people away in past years. A local fisherman in Half Moon Bay stands by his boat and checks a radio for updates. He says when the bar is closed, we do not go out. It is not worth losing a crew for a catch. On the sand, lifeguards direct visitors away from the waterline, reminding them that calm surf can turn deadly without warning. County alerts warn residents to avoid jetties, rocks, and low-lying parking lots until further notice. Each action is a direct response to the incoming swell, turning verified forecast data from the National Weather Service and NOAA into real-world decisions along the coast. Right now, NOAA and the National Weather Service warn that wave conditions can shift within hours, turning familiar beaches unpredictable. Coastal awareness is not just a precaution, it is survival. As new storms form offshore, the next surge is never far behind. Stay alert and stay informed. Thanks for watching.